What's up, Facebook? Hope you're all doing fantastically today. Today we're going to be talking about marketing psychology. Today we're going to be talking about marketing psychology. As you guys are tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from, more importantly. And I've got a little quote for you guys today as you're all tuning in. I just wait for a few of you to tune in. Uh... Had some really good conversations with people on off business topics recently, right? And this is not relative to marketing psychology. However, it is to a certain extent to our business, right? So we're going to be talking about marketing psychology today specifically. That's what we're going to be talking about. I've got a little quote here for you guys that I want to share with you first, uh, and just sort of get your mind thinking a little bit. I've got a couple of a couple of little small topics I want to talk about before I go into marketing psychology today because the psychology of ourselves, uh, you know, we've got to understand the psychology of ourselves to be able to understand also the psychology of other people as well, right? And being, I've been in sales for 13 years selling products and services through multi, a multitude of different industries. And this is one thing that I had to learn over the years. I've read multiple books. Uh, I've read books from you know, Robert Cialdini. Um, I've read behavioral therapy books. I've read um, you know, heaps of biz, uh, books on elemental psychology uh, business psychology, psychology of people, um, psychological traits. I've done heaps of different things. So I really just want to get your minds thinking before we go into the marketing psychology. So I've got a little quote for you guys first. So this is the first this is the this is the first quote I want to share with you guys. The superior man is modest in his speech but exceeds in his actions. Okay? Now, this is not relative to marketing today. However, it is relative in some way, shape, or form. A superior man is modest in his speech but exceeds in his actions. So whatever that means to you is what it means to you. To me, I look at it and I go, okay, cool. Uh, it all comes to a conversation I had last night. And what this person said to me, they said, you know, uh, I hate it when somebody, right? So hate wasn't the word used, right? But what was used is I hate it when people change their mind like the wind, okay? <laughs> when people change their mind like the wind. For example, uh, you say to somebody, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do something. So this is all part of psychology, but it's not marketing psychology, right? However, it's going to transpire it some way, shape, or form into your business in, in some way, shape, or form, right? So uh, I hate it when someone changes their mind like the wind. They say that they're going to do something and then they just don't follow through or they change their mind, okay? Uh, this relates heavily to business as well, right? Not only to a personal life, but also to business as well because, if you say you're going to do something for people, then you follow through and you do that, okay? Um, and it's also under promise and over deliver, right? So if you look at the quote that I shared with you beforehand, it was uh, basically saying that modest in your speech, but you, you know, your actions speak otherwise, they speak more of what you are as a person. Let me know your thoughts on that as well. We're going to be diving deeper into market psychology today. Marketing psychology, and I'm going to give you an aspect to marketing that is so, so crucial to the development of your campaigns, to the development of your whole overarching strategy to really start showing people some differentiation and really what they're after, right? Like I speak about I've, touched, I've actually touched on this in the page, right? And there's, there's, but I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into it today as well because, uh, you know, after I think about 160, 170 odd videos, lives that we've done uh, on this page, there's, there's plenty of information, but like sometimes I just got to hone in on things a little bit more that I believe are relevant for you guys. Uh, to be able to start getting better results in your marketing and the psychology or one aspect to this that I'm going to share with you today is really, really important um, because psychology comes like, 
You got to understand the psycho- psychology, not only of yourself, but I'm talking about your marketplace here. I'm talking about the psychology of your marketplace. And what does that mean to you? You under- like really, I share this so often. However, sometimes it does take five to seven times to really get it um, and, and to really understand what it is that I'm talking about. And sometimes it does take five to seven times to do that. However, right, the bigger picture to this is the person that understands their marketplace the best is the person that wins. Whoever understands their marketplace the best is the person that wins. So if you don't understand your marketplace in depth from a psychology perspective, perspective, you got to start doing some things differently and you got to start getting some different, like, and you'll find that you'll start getting some different results. And one way to be able to do this is pretty simple. So with relation to the psychology, people, this is what really ideally people are after. So they like the entertainment, they like the value, they like everything that you talk about. However, people are after proof. So if you look back into psychology and how that works, I mean, 13 years of selling products and services to people now through multiple different industries, everything from tech to consulting to coaching to uh, marketing to sales trainings to, uh, you know, real estate, cars, finance, and that's smaller shadow finance, um, you know, uh, larger chattel finance, property, etc. right? So it's like heaps of different types of industries and uh, services, etc. right? The main thing a lot of people are after is in some way, shape or form some proof, okay? And there's an, there's a, and throughout all the books that I've read over the years as well, there's an elemental psychology which was named by uh, Charlie Munger and also um, Warren Buffett, who owned Berkshire Hathaway. Now, they came up with 25 different cognitive biases of the brain, right? And one of them is called social proof bias, okay? So I'll write that down, social proof. Oh, wow, this is decided to, oh, there we go. Social proof. Bias. Okay, so people are after proof in some way, shape, or form, and there's several different aspects to be able to project this through your marketing and the way that you do business every single day. Uh, I'll give you guys some examples. So one of our clients, uh, one of, one of our clients, uh, Amy Small Finance Broker, previous client of ours. Um, basically, her her social media itself, when she first came to us, she was doing around a million a month in loans. Then, you know, very short period of working with us of around six months, we'd literally 4X'd that business of hers. Um, and she was doing between, you know, four to five, five million a month after six months. Then after two years of, you know, continuing to implement the strategies, the processes, everything, she hit 10, okay? And now she's got this huge problem of not being able to find good quality staff, to be able to help with the fulfillment because, you know, everybody's like, there's only so much time as a business owner we have during the day, right? Wouldn't you guys agree? And when it comes to, you know, social proof campaigns, what we did a lot through hers as well was sharing testimonials, congratulating people for purchasing and, and, and uh, you know, getting approvals on their properties, So what does that mean for your business? Too many people talk about their product, their service, and everything like that on social. If you want to differentiate yourself and start getting better results in your marketing, you've got to start speaking about your clients. Amy Small, pure understanding of somebody who switched up what they do to start celebrating their client successes instead. And what happens? The clients see it and they're like, oh, thank you so much. You're so amazing. What do they do? Share it. What happens then? You start dipping into other markets, right? And a lot of people just aren't doing enough of this in their marketing activities at the moment, promoting enough social proof. Amy, as soon as we switched up her campaigns to start sort of sharing more client successes, that's when she started getting different results. 
right? You can, you can talk about your product all day. However, when other people start talking about it, that's what's going to work from a psychology side of things to be able to take your marketing to a whole new level. And you'll find that you'll get three times more leads by using this as well. And you'll get three times better quality people that actually want to have conversations with you and, uh, and want to do some business with you. Okay. Now, marketing campaigns, yes, you get a lot of people that still want to do business with you and all that sort of stuff when you dip into other, other sides of psychology. However, for me to go in depth into all elements of, of psychology today is not going to do you guys justice. I prefer to give you one so you can go away and implement it, right? So people are after proof. Back when I was selling insurance um, for a brokerage that I owned back in Tasmania, um, we used to talk about uh, a lot to do with the product, showcase the product and everything. But what we would do as like a social proof thing is we would, when we we're in like say farming areas, like Tasmania is a very small place, right? Uh, pretty much people know people, okay? So what we do from a social proof perspective is when we're sitting in front of the client and we're showcasing them through the, client, through the, through the list, the products, the services, how it all works, we'll say, um, John down the road, he took the Platinum Plus package, which is giving him $2,500 a month should he be in an accident, fall off the motorbikes on the farm, things like that. Very, very happy with his service. Just saw him before you. We've also got Fred just down the road as well, who you know races motorbikes on weekends just like you and uh, is part of the motocross club in XYZ Town. Also very happy with his product. He actually had an accident a little while back and he got paid as a result of this as well. Right, so we would share stories, social proof, even through not only marketing, right, but also through sales techniques while we're speaking to people actively. Okay, um, and you guys, I want you guys to start sort of talking about this in the comments, right? I want you guys to start going and sort of workshopping some things in the comments around your thoughts, right? What can you share? Uh, in your campaigns, right? What can you showcase? What can you use? What can you talk about? How can you provide your clients proof that, hey, you know what it is that you're talking about, right? How can you start talking about this element of psychology in your marketing, right, to start getting different results, Share it in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. So, uh, and do you guys like the whiteboards? Should I continue with the whiteboards as well? Let me know. Should I, ch ch should I keep going with these whiteboards? Because I'm actually thinking of potentially just changing it back to the way we were before. But if you guys are enjoying the whiteboards, I'll continue with them. So, so you've got to be starting to show more proof around, hey, I'm good at what I do. Uh, and you start creating more trust, you start creating more, you know, excitement around your product, right? So showing proof, and this is what it's called, the social proof bias, right? So you've got to start showing some proof. <clears throat> okay. Now, how can you do this? Let's talk about the how, and then we're going to wrap this one up unless you guys have some questions. So how can you start doing this? Oh, wants to work perfectly before, but I think it's just got its, uh, it'll work eventually. Switch up pens. Here's one I prepared earlier. Let's talk about the how. How can you go about show, showcasing more proof, social proof, the social proof bias, through marketing, like showing your own marketing psychology through your own marketing, right? Cool. How can you go about doing that? It's like we spoke a bit about yesterday. This is all part of what I spoke about yesterday. We're just expanding a little bit further on this all for you. So if you guys are tuning in literally every day, right, you guys are going to get the most from this tuning in every single day because you're going to really start putting these pieces together and you know, once you guys have got, if you guys have had results with what we've spoken about so far, um, go up to the top of the page, give us a review, right, um, on what you think. So here's the how. Video.
and that could be, you know, you break apart a case study. And we're looking for new case studies right now, by the way. So if you want to be our next case study of businesses that we add leads and sales to, right? Uh, if you want 37 to 59 leads in 28 days or less, we're looking for case studies right now. So just type case study below and we'll send you some details. Um, so you can do it through video case studies and then you can just do it in short testimonial, right, videos as well, okay? Um, you can publish blogs, or you can get them to do a guest blog about their experience. You can get them to do reviews. And that's on Google, Facebook, right? The main ones, right? If you're doing a lot of social media marketing, you really got to start doing that. Um, you could also use LinkedIn, right? And you can get them to endorse your services. So you got to start thinking bigger picture with all of this, right? And how you can start really getting some social proof uh, across all channels, right? For us, we just got a new case study actually out. Uh, and that client is, shout out to uh, Beck Thompson. Um, within seven days, she generated over 100 leads uh, using, our, using our processes, our copywriting, all that type of stuff as well. That was her first paid marketing campaign, I believe, too. Um, she was unsure how to get clients. She didn't know what to do, how to structure, how to put it all together, how to write copy, how to target, anything like that. She didn't know how to do anything like that. We've got a new case study coming out. She just filmed one of the videos uh, for that. So we'll have that out very, very soon for you guys too to, to sort of share her story a little bit. So shout out to Beck Thompson from the Relationship Circle. She's kicking some big goals for people that are in relationships as well. So if you guys, I don't know, if you're having some challenges around your relationship or, you know, if you're having some challenges around finding a relationship, etc., cetera, uh, and you want some direction, she's your girl. Definitely to go to. Exceptional coach. Um, so the so endorsements on LinkedIn, fantastic. Use that. Uh, getting them to endorse or even like review your service on LinkedIn as well right? All little things that you can do. Um, you could do some promo for them. You can do some promo for your clients, depending on your service, what you do, how you do things right. Um, you can do some paid promo. You can do some, you know, uh, some brochures. Right? All of this is all feeding to the bigger picture. Hope you guys can see all of this. Sorry, that's uh, terrible. Um, <laughs> so, so these these are all elements that you can have. Like you, 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 you gotta start be thinking the bigger picture on the hows, how you can do it. Uh, the structure is pretty simple, but you got to think the how, how can I do it? So drawing these types of little, like, I guess, maps, right? I know Serena likes maps. Um, so I'm getting used to doing maps, right? For people that are very visual. We've got a, a, a lot of people that are visual that watch. <laughs> um, so this is like the how, this is sort of the process that give you guys some ideas as to what you can do. If you'd like us to take care of all this for you, we can do all that. We can take care of it all for you. Just let us know. Reach out to us. Just put case study below and we can help you do that. Um, so these are like the hows. Another client who's uh, on here today, shout out to Cherry Sigmon, one of our scale partners, Fortune 500 Cybersecurity. Um, you know, she she's basically all but now got her whole business completely online fast couple of last little sort of touches and everything like that. Um, I've had an experience on her expertise and they're exceptional when it comes to cybersecurity, right? There is literally so, so, so many 
little loopholes and things that someone could jump through. And, you know, small businesses are the bit, one of the biggest targets when it comes to cybersecurity, right? So um, don't, don't be thinking it's not going to happen to you. Serena had an experience where um, some hackers uh, took down her whole website and ho- held it at ransom, right? So, I mean, <laughs> you know, and S- Serena, that was with her, one of her other businesses, right? So, I mean, don't think that this isn't ever going to happen to you, okay? Because uh, like cybersecurity, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There was actually a uh, thing on the news last night. First time I watched the news in a while. I very rarely watch the news, right? But um, what they were talking about on the news is they were talking about specifically people who, uh, you know, apparently there's not enough cybersecurity professionals in Australia to cope with the demand, at the moment, um, so just just because of the amount of cyber crime that's going on at the moment, right? So I'll tell you right now, don't think it's not going to happen to you, because really you got to get someone like Cherry in to be able to do this for you. So like her whole business is pretty much all online right now as well, um, and we're about to turn on some marketing and things like that for her too. So. Um, you know, the, these are all the, like when it comes to like putting the psychology through all of your marketing, like this is everything that Cherry's got in place, but she's also like the psychology of the hackers, right? So, <laughs> um, don't think it's not going to happen to you, right? Don't think it's not going to happen to you because it will. So that's the how, right? So with, with, with Cherry at the moment, what we're doing is we're putting social proof through hers as well. Because, you know, she's done, you know, some stuff with us and she's exceptional, uh, absolutely exceptional what she does when it comes to cyber cyber security, right? So we've just done a pretty cool little testimonial for her on that, right? So this is all the stuff that you guys have got to be putting through all of your campaigns as well. So if you're looking for different results, you've got to be starting to use more of this psychological side. So as you guys are tuning in, uh, have you guys got any other further questions that you would like to ask today? This is your opportunity. Marketing psychology, what do you want to know about marketing psychology? What do you want to know about the social proof bias that I'm talking about today? What do you want to know about it? What do you... what? What do you need to move forward in your marketing? Like, just hit us with a question. If you want a question answered, the only silly question is the one that's not asked. Some of you come here every single day. Like, what do you want to learn? What do you want to get access to? What do you want to? Uh, what do you want some assistance with? When it comes to marketing psychology, We're going to be just going through the comments now as well, see what other questions you guys have. Welcome, Serena. Welcome, Veronique. Welcome, Mum. Welcome, Cherry. Hope you're doing amazing. Welcome, Indran. More whiteboards. Yes, 100% more whiteboards. If people want more whiteboards, I'll do more whiteboards. That's as simple as that. If, but only if you guys just type whiteboard below, I'll continue doing it. Uh Awake, <laughs> you're awake, Cherry. We sent you a message earlier, actually, too. Uh, hello, Indran. Uh, haha, we said you might have been asleep. 100%. 100%. I dislike gunners. Gumbo, <laughs> Gum, gumbo, do this, gonna do that. I always <laughs> no, they won't do it. 100%. Anyone that says gunner is never gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. They're never gonna do it. Um, what else have we got here? Oh, please. I'll make him keep doing the whiteboards. Oh, will you, Serena? You'll make me. Can't make anyone do anything. I'll do it if I'll do it if everyone wants me to do it. <laughs> the pens should not be held upside down or open for too long. They dry out. Well, I don't leave them upside down or anything like that. Uh, Jared loves drawing anyway. Uh, at least on Zoom, he types out and makes it look amazing. Yeah, 100%. I do make it look amazing on Zoom. Um, was also mentioning to a friend today how people are hacking into cameras, computers, and using... Ha- yeah, they are. It's it's insane what's happening, right? So, like, if you've got a small business that needs 
to that hasn't done anything like this or hasn't done any type of cybersecurity work or any sort of protection stuff, you can't just have antivirus and hope that that's going to work, right? You got to have someone look at all internal and external threats, okay? Someone to do a full, full look over the whole thing. And, you know, hey, you can even mention to Cherry, can you look at my personal as well as my business? I'm sure she'll do that for you. Um, common, they're crucial skill shortages worldwide. 100% they are. It's it's crazy. Uh, white hat hack. <laughs> there you go. Laurie got hacked. You should have gone to Cherry. Oh, no. Were you hacked, Laurie? Did I miss that? My counselling site was hacked two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Uh, Laurie, you got to speak with Cherry straight away. You guys should reach out and connect. Don't let that happen again. Um, I have a question. Over the years of buying stuff, etc., you know what I'm like. Say, genuinely, someone wants to wants your program, but it seems out of their price range, or they should reach... Or, or they have reached the limit of what they want to spend, you just let them go. Yeah, well, look, uh, depends on your business, right? I mean, if something's out of someone's price range at the moment, it's actually a good thing. You don't want to be working with everybody in your business. So, yeah, you should let them go. Depending on the type of person, if you don't want to be working with them, you should definitely let them go. If if it's out of their price range, right, you would just look at a payment plan, right, alternative options. If someone really wants to do it, they'll do it. Otherwise, you set them up with a little bit of a plan in order to make it all happen, right? And you set them up with that plan, and then that once that plan is completed and done and all that type of stuff, then they come back to you. You follow them up, you keep them accountable, all this type of stuff, Right? So if someone, it is out of someone's price range at the moment, you say to them, okay, this is the goal. This is how to get there. Okay, let's go do it. They go and do it. You keep them accountable a little bit and then you enroll them in the program, right? So that's the way I like to do things. Um, you know, like uh, I only ever created a low barrier to entry product when Corona hit. That was the only time that I did it, but we created demand around one program, right? So we had some people that would, it's a very sort of silly thing. It might sound silly just letting somebody go. However, I find that people get more excited when you say no and sorry, you can't work it with us. You're not at the right spot, but this is what you must do in order to get there. When you do that, there's an element of psychology around that, right? Um, and then what happens? They go away, they do it, they come back and they start working with you, right? Like it's, it's, a, it's the way that I've always done it and it's a, it's a good way to do it. What other questions have we got today? Maybe a mix of whiteboard and your smiling face. <laughs> Hopefully you saw that. Um, welcome Candy, welcome across to the call, hope you're doing a amazing as well. Read every bloody message. Yes, I do have to read every message. Otherwise, if I miss one, someone's going to message me and say, you missed one. Cover your webcam, the sticky note helps cover it. Uh, alright, cool. Awesome, guys. That looks like it's all the questions. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, remember, you got to put this element through your marketing, right? you got to have some source of marketing psychology throughout what you do. If you do not have it, right, you're just going to fit into the rest of the mold of what everyone else is doing and the way everyone else is doing things at the moment, and you will never get to this point, okay, of getting exceptional with your online marketing that is so if you'd like to get exceptional with your online marketing make sure you put the elements of the social proof bias through it all and this is the social proof bias the 25 cognitive biases of the brain was by made by billionaires billionaires put this together it's um charlie munger net worth of about 1.4 to 2 billion something like that um, and you know, you guys know Warren Buffett, right? <laughs> One of the richest men in the world. 
both of those guys put the 25 different cognitive biases of the brain together. Social proof bias is just one of those as well, okay? One of 25. So you gotta have this in your marketing and you gotta understand all of this and why it's important and everything. Just re-go back through this whole video and you'll get all of that information, right? So thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, remember, if you do not fight for your own freedom, absolutely nobody else will. So every single day, you must get out there. Every single day, you must take action. Every single day, you must make it happen. And I'll remember this to be the warrior. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 12 o'clock Perth Western Australia time for the live show. Speak to you then.